The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and e-book formats on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and sponsored by international award-winning author Mia Mohsen Zia of Missing. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Whitener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Whitener Show, international warring author Mia molson If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia molson has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia molson available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and uh, now heard on HamiltonRadio.net, Oldies FM, Diamonds Radio, and a few networks coming near you. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also cool merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, also phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com for the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you suit on today. We're here with a terrific gentleman from the New England area who's known as the Wizard of Stars for the ability to impersonate thousands of celebrity voices. Look at the hear some of those from the master himself. He's hosted several TV and radio um, credits as well, too, including Bozo the Clown for the Fox affiliate uh, in the New England area. Also hosts his own variety show and uh, performed... Um, I'm performing with Bruce Springsteen and uh, John Lennon impersonator, and uh, he does a great job of those. And um, he's got two wonderful children. His son, Randy, nicknamed Bubba, was a Division I college punter. And his daughter, Renee, is a country singer songwriter who will be making her debut. And um, he also wrote a children's book called Charlie Horse. We'll talk about that. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in the beautiful uh, downtown doing in the Lincoln area, the Wizard of Stars and the Ultimate Celebrity Impersonator, and what voice is going to come out, ladies and gentlemen? They're very multi talented. Gary Levitt. Gary, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Mike, thanks for having me. I am very, very pleased to be on with such a a great talent as yourself. Well, actually, you're pretty much a great talent yourself. You're like the number one um, in New England as well, too. You're the Wizard of Stars for the ability to impersonate thousands of celebrity voices. We got to hear some of those and uh, hosted several TV and radio credits, including Bozo the Clown in uh, New England's Fox affiliate. And also um, you host so your own variety show and you also uh, performed as Bruce Springsteen and John Lennon impersonator. You got two wonderful children. You've got Randy. You call Bubba, who is a division one college punter and your uh, lovely daughter, Renee, is an up and coming country singer songwriter. You also wrote a children's book. And before getting to all that, Gary, 
Tell us how our first cast started. <laughs> Actually, believe it or not, Mike, I was in the third grade of school living in Portland, Maine. And I used to go into the teacher's rooms at lunchtime and I would impersonate different celebrities. And I was always just attracted to people that perform. I love the spotlight. And back in about 1968, 69, thereabouts, I'm in those said teacher's rooms in Portland at the old Hall Elementary School and impersonating the likes of Dean Martin, Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne, believe it or not. (laughs) <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I want to hear those guys, too. And uh, I'm sure let's say I'm a teacher. I think they got to be impressed. you like, you know, you got to get up there like John Wayne. Like... <laughs> exactly. Exact. In fact, when I have a cold, my John Wayne is spot on. But yours is really good. I have to say that. Well, I, really I like do. I like yours better as well, too. I mean, you're the um, the Wizard of Stars uh, in the New England area. For me, it's just like, you know, I'm just another person in Bismarck, North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd rather live out there, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, of course, you got your uh, your sport teams as well, too. You love the Patriots. You love the Bruins, the Celtics, the Red Sox, and everything else. Your clam chowder and all that. <laughs> so, you know, boy, sometimes I wish I was there, but taking it all in. But, of course, you, you know, that's the nice part about the United States. You get to enjoy just about everything. And, of course, you know, each person is a celebrity and get to enjoy every single one. So, um, you know, continue on with uh, you being a third grade and just working your way up and everything else. And um, not just three celebrity voices, but you just creeping up into the thousands and thousands and thousands as well. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny, Mike, and people say, oh, you're exaggerating. But what it is with my voice ability, for whatever reason, as you get older, the voices tend to not be as good. And hence, one of the greatest voice guys of all time, Rich Little. Rich, when he was younger, was fantastic. But as he grew older, the voices all kind of sounded alike Mm -hmm. and not taking anything away from him because he's a he's a fantastic talent. But he, John Biner and Frank Caution were three of the different impersonators that actually inspired me to get into doing impressions. Wow. And so I actually had the opportunity within the past year and a half to interview Rich Little on my radio show up here in Boston. Nice. And he's very good at what he does. And the voices that he was at best at, he's still fantastic with. But then again, I thought my voices would start to sound alike as I got older. And I found something called apple cider vinegar. That's my secret. Apple cider vinegar. That's my (laughs) wife's favorite tonic. It is so amazing. Yes. It, It is. And what it's done is it clears things out. So my voice is are that much better. And I don't, I, I know you're going to say it's a little crazy, but truth be told, I think it's enhanced my voices quite a bit. I've been doing it for five years now and I'm 61 now. And I say from the age of 55 on what the voices are getting better. It it definitely um, gets better with age too. And the another person there, which I think of is Mel Blank and um, my son, Sean sent me a clip of him on the tonight show and uh, with him and his actual speaking voice. Yeah, that is my speaking voice. Is that really you? Yeah, it is my speaking voice. You're not bugs me. Yeah, it is my speaking voice. And he was just really uh, just stressing Johnny Carson. I was so hilarious. I mean, we're used to hearing Mel Blank with a thousand voices. Yeah, what's up doc? Huffling fuck a tash and all that thousands voices. When you hear him, um, was talk normal it's like okay who are you really impersonating <laughs> like, he, he was just really he really just confuses people it's like the guy is so bloody talented <laughs> yeah mel blank such a such a great talent the, the warner brothers characters obviously i do them hannah barbera as well a My lot favorite. of the iconic cartoon characters that are around today like from the simpsons spongebob family guy so on and so forth i'm doing all those voices and then you get into the B character voices like the, the deputy dogs and, and things. Some people remember those characters, but the A-list Hollywood actors, the B-list Hollywood actors, the C-list, a lot of the old time TV series. Like, I don't know about you. you. You and I look, we're about the same age. I might have you by a couple of years. It, it, it's perfectly okay. I mean, you're more seasoned than I am too. So you got a few years ahead of you. Go right ahead. <laughs> but but I, I love the TV shows of the 60s, like Hogan's Heroes, mm-hmm. like Green Acres, like Andy Griffith. And then you get into the 70s with All in the Family. In the addition to All in the Family, I love the TV show Barney Miller, the 80s with Taxi and Cheers, the 90s with Seinfeld. And then, you know, it, it's kind of funny, Mike, I really think today, as far as comedy goes, the best cartoon comedy is also the best sitcom comedy today, and that's Family Guy. It's a little bit racy, 
It is. They offend yeah. a lot of people, but it's funny. It's it's irrelevant, irreverent, relevant. It does everything. It's cute humor. It's racy humor. They they encompass everything. They truly do. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the uh, classic cartoons I remember watching is like one of the first ones besides the um, the obvious was Underdog, Tennessee Tuxedo, my favorite. Yeah. Tennessee Tuxedo is my name. And this is my chum chelly. Uh, pleased to meet you. It's like I remember just looking forward to getting up in the morning. Yeah. Breakfast with that smart ass penguin. Then at lunchtime, you'll get to watch like the banana splits. And then when you come home, it'd be like Batman. So it's like everything just mixes up. It's like wherever we live, you know, Milwaukee, Racine, Chicago, even visit uh, relatives in uh, Madison or like, like say, go out to Rockford or something. It's like they always rotate in cartoons and everything. It's like you get look for it no matter what. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it is. And for me, over the years, mixing up the voices and depending on the audience, because if you have an older audience, they want the older actors. If you have a younger audience, you have the younger. In, in a day's time, when I played the part of Bose of the Clown and I was doing radio and then I was doing the nightclub comedy scene, basically the early Friday morning, would be with a radio crowd that is geared towards mostly a guy audience. And some of the humor would be, I wouldn't call it racy, but it, it was edgy and it stepped up to the line without stepping over the line, utilizing the voices. Of course, when I'm doing Bozo, that's geared to all kids, young kids, and that's a different audience. And it's the knock, knock jokes, which, which is fun because mm -hmm. you see kids smiling. And then when we got to the nighttime again, it goes back to being edgy and, as you know, Mike, if you're a true pro and you know what you're doing, you can switch on the fly and you never make a mistake. It's not like, oh, this is that audience. I accidentally did this kind of humor for that audience. No, it doesn't happen. It's like an actor. An actor goes in, he plays a role. He's a tough guy. He has some dirty lines in one movie. And the next night, he's, he's squeaky clean. That's mm -hmm. pretty much how it is. That reminds me of Buddy Hackett, too, back in the day. It's just like when I was going up watching Buddy Hackett, I remember him in being in Herbie the Lug Bug the love bug and i find out that he does all the las vegas comedy shows with his x-rated humor than he was in um a yeah. few other movies it's a mad 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 world it's like i thought buddy hackett's doing that but yeah it's like you know the ones are the most versatile the ones most successful and the um modern day version of buddy hackett but unfortunately he uh passed away too soon was bob saget and um bob saget you know basically you know him from um from, from full house um, full house yes and then mm -hmm. uh also he does his um his, his racy act as well too. Uh, you know, you just smoke up and everything, and then also did some other um sitcoms as well too. But you know, the more flexible you are, it's like the more successful you become. So I mean, that's just what it takes. Certainly does. Certainly does. So I will definitely do some voices if you want to throw. What well, well, would you like me to run through the gamut here a little bit? It's up to you. Absolutely. You know what? Uh, I've got a few in mind. Uh, we'll do that in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundWeb Studios is the answer. SoundWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sound Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has gotten great reviews in Evil Love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today of Fergal's Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries. Also on HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and a few on the networks coming near you. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, Cool Merchandise, and more. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. 
You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Weiner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the terrific Gary Levitt, the uh, Wizard of Stars for the ability to impersonate thousands of voices here on the Mike Weiner Show. Also hosted several and uh, TV radio shows as well, too, including a very popular show in New England. Is also Bozo the Clown. And uh, oh, and speaking of Bozo the Clown, let's go and uh, hear your excellent Bozo. We're going to spin the wheel of voices here. It's all zzz. <laughs> <laughs> You got it. So a little bozo for your listeners here or your viewers. Mm. Well, howdy, pals. It's your old pal bozo. And just remember what your old pal bozo always says. Just keep laughing. <laughs> I'll see you around <laughs> like a donut. <laughs> hey, I could probably think of uh, some as well, too, like with um, with the Simpsons as well, too. You could also do a thing on Homer Simpson as well, too. Let's say you just um, get out of the power plant. Um, somewhere in New Jersey as well, too. He accidentally hit that red button while eating a donut. <laughs> oh, take it, go, my Simpson, and ooh, donut. Go, go. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, boy, it's Krusty the Clown. Smithers, who is it, Phil and Phil? Uh, Jameis Burns, that's Homer Simpson. Oh, boy, I didn't do it. I didn't. Homer, not in front of the kids. Yes, Homer Simpson. He's the worst worker I've ever had here at the Quickie Mart. Come again. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm ready to go to Quickie Mart after this one. I got to have a wreath on a Quickie Mart. <laughs> hmm. Oh, and um, okay, let's let's go with some of the uh, voices as well, too. How about Woody Woodpecker, that little smart-ass bird either you love or you just want to just take it and just throw him against a tree or something? <laughs> now, I was told you could do that really well, so I wanted to hear you. Oh, oh, really? Who, who, yes. Who, who told you that? Was it Woody or something? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. If this is a contest, <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, guess who? <laughs> oh, look at this, my hand sandwich. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, that Woody Woodpecker's voice is very similar to this character who's famous today. Hey, Mr. Crab, how about a Krabby Patty? Oh, great. And SpongeBob <laughs> with his buddy Patrick. Okay, SpongeBob. Me need me money, boys. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> my kids love watching SpongeBob. That was so hilarious. I think my kids went out and got those SpongeBob dolls. And, and I think my uh, daughter got you know, like SpongeBob t shirts and everything else. It was like everything's all SpongeBob. <laughs> Love SpongeBob. Great character. One of the cleanest cartoons out there today and still very funny. Oh, just hilarious as well, too. And hey, how about Yogi Bear, who loves to steal your food out of picnic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to follow y'all lead and I'm going to chime in after you do it. So go ahead. All right. Hey, hey, hey Yogi Bear, what do you got there, uh, old boo boo? Well, gee, Yogi, we, we got Cindy over here and uh, he got this nice picking. Oh, it's a good day picking today, boo boo. Yay. That is so good. I'll give you some Warner Brothers. Here we go. Yeah. What's up, Jack? Shh. You very, very quiet. Suffering with the fuck attached. I say, boy, pay attention to me now, boy. Oh, three or four. <laughs> My name is Pete Poomer. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about Pepe Le Pew? It's just like, you know, I mean, too bad they extinguish him, but you still got to revive the character somehow. I love that one. <laughs> you lead. I t I'll follow. You're the dance leader. Uh, and psh, runs away. <laughs> That's very good. Mike, you're very talented, man. I got to tell you that. Uh, actually, you're the, you're the wizard of a um, of thousand voices as well, too. So it's like, I got to follow you. It's like, I've got big shoes to fill if I'm trying to uh, impersonate your stuff. So, <laughs> Well, I'll give you some of the A-list Hollywood stars, if you don't mind. We'll, do, we'll, we'll run the gamut here for you. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot you can imitate uh, some of the A-list stars. And, um, you know, before we do it, how about some of the famous presidents, too, like um, like Richard Nixon, although he's kind of crook. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that tricky dick was really good. It, it was great. In fact, your, your dick... It's huge. It's huge. Uh, now, Mike, I, I told you before, and, I, and I'll tell you again, I did not have sex relations with that woman. Of course, I'm talking about my wife, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> and what does Hillary have to say about that? 
<laughs> you are lying, man. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> well, well, Bill, if if you think um, if you think your girlfriend is nice, it's like we can have a threesome or something, right, Nancy? <laughs> uh, what was that? <laughs> well, next question, please. Uh, I can give you. I'll do a little bit of a rap song that I did. I'll clean it up because I don't want to offend your audience, but. The uh, years ago, I had come up with the presidential rap and we started with Obama. But then when Trump came around and then we added Trump to it and then there was the Joe Biden. But we'll, we'll keep it short and sweet. And it, it involves goes all the way back to JFK. But it goes something like this. I'll I'll try not to offend your audience, so to speak. Go ahead. Don't worry like, about it. So <laughs> uh, you sure? OK, here we go. Huge. We're here to do the presidential rap. It goes like this. Hey there, homie, I'm no chump. My name is Donald. It's Donald Trump. Obama's a pussy and I grab some too. Make America great. That's what I do. Uh, yo, mama, I'm Barack Obama. Here to do the presidential rap. Uh, I go to my left. I uh, can't go right. Now, here's my cousin. Uh, he'll keep it real tight. What if John W's in the house? New Webbs is a mass structure, not even a mouse. Let me be clear or just plain glib. Bill Clinton. It's hanging in his crib. All you single ladies keep on chilling because Bubba Clinton is always willing. I didn't inhale, I promise you. Now here's my bro to tell you a thing or two. Read my lips because lips don't lie. I'm Puff Daddy Bush, not a bad guy. Here's someone who's a little bit hipper. Can I get a woo-woo for the gipper? Will, check baby, check baby, one, two, three. I'm Run Runny Run of the GOP. Hey, Mr. Gorbachev, chair down that wall. Now here's JFK, and he'll finish the call. Yes, I'm JFK, the Grandmaster Rapper. Fresh to the nines, I always look dapper. Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, too. It's what the presidential rap can do for you. <laughs> I'd love to hear that in the next uh, presidential debate or presidential race, you know, especially when... Um, Trump and Biden go out for the next debate. Who's going to be the next president? That's going to be pretty good. <laughs> and I do have a Biden, but you know what it is with me, Mike? Unless the bo- voice is a nine or better, um, I don't like to showcase it because I don't want to put something out there that is less than that. I know there's a lot of impersonators and celebrity impressions that are very, very talented individuals and very good at what they do. But oftentimes, I think it's just an opinion. You might agree, you might disagree. But oftentimes the impressionists will put out there the ones that are six or sevens when you're rating on a one to ten. So if they got 30 voices and 20 of them are really good and then 10 of them are a six to seven, people remember that. So rather mm. being known as a pretty good voice impressionist or a good one, leave out the ones you're not so good at and, and just focus in on the ones that you're really good at. Just just an opinion. Hmm. That's rather interesting as well, too. And, um, you know, it's this thing about some of the actors as well, too, and personally, who are some of your favorite actors, singers, musicians and um, comedians growing up? You know, I mean, you got a lot of comedians out there, too, especially in the Boston area. You certainly do. So the greatest uh, late night comedian of all time was a guy who was a king of late night. And, uh, of course, his name was uh, it was Johnny Carson. Johnny As a matter Carson. of fact, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to play a, a little bit of a game here. It's called uh, Karnak the Magnificent, and it uh, it goes something like this. O.J. Simpson, Magic Johnson, and Mike Tyson. O.J. Simpson, Magic Johnson, and Mike Tyson. <laughs> Name a butcher, a laker, and a license plate maker. Ho, ho, ho. Very good, sir. May you come between Rosie and a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Too funny. Uh, of course, and- you got the sidekick, Edgar McMahon. Oh, Johnny, you're so funny. Oh, <laughs> and, and a funny story, Mike. I met Ed McMahon over at the Epcot Center when I was on my honeymoon with my wife. I happened to be in the men's room. I was using the urinal. This guy pulls up alongside of me <laughs> in the other urinal and he's going to the bathroom and someone's talking to him. And I go, I'm not looking because obviously you don't go looking at the other urinals. <laughs> 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 so I'm, I'm, ta- I'm listening to this guy talking. I go, that's Ed McMahon. And I go, yeah, you're Ed McMahon. And he goes, 
You are correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. And so after we washed our hands and we went outside, my wife took our picture. So I still have that picture of Ed McMahon with me back <laughs> back in 1992. Wow. Long time ago. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, we're glad Ed McMahon wasn't pissed over that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's right. He was a real whiz. <laughs> oh, <laughs> another one, another one of the late nights I love watching was Jay Leno back in the days. He goes, "Yeah, I'd like to drive the Harley Davidson." And you know, I got a late night guest too, and um, I got my Firebird as well too. So <laughs> that's see, you know what, Mike, you're right there with me, man. There's no difference between you. You know, the the Jay Leno, he, he's got the high pitched, excited voice. And I talked to him several times because there's a couple of people up here in Boston that I, I only met him once. So it's not like we're friends or anything like that, but they introduced us. But the first time I talked to him on the phone, I didn't even know it was him. He was reviewing my demo tape, true story. Oh. And I was at work and he called up, he goes, hi, this is uh, this Gary Levitt. And I go, yes. He says, uh, this is Jay Leno. And, uh, and I was looking over your videotape and it's, it's pretty good, but I think, um, uh, some things you should take out and other things you put put in. So it's more, you know, so it's it's more refined. And uh, I think it's him. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he did voiceover work, too. He did the Crimson Chin on uh, Jimmy Neutron or one of those cartoons. Oh, yes. That's Feel, really odd parents. Feel the odd parents. Oh, that. Yeah, that Jimmy Neutron. And I think there was another one, too. Um, I had a guest on in my early days of the Mike Wagner show, Eddie Deason. And he was um, he, he was that uh, that smart aleck kid um, that Mr. Know it out. It was on the Pole Express. He was that um, that crazy scientist. And it was on. Um, oh, gosh. What was that name of it? It was that was uh, Feel the uh, Odd Parents, right? No, no, no. This no, this is uh, one. This is that um, that crazy science um, cartoon. It was on the Cartoon Network. I, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, my gosh. Not Robo Chicken. It wasn't Clyde Crashkoff, was it? Do you remember that? Or is that going too far back? No, no, no. no. That wasn't it. I was just trying to think. It was around um, Cartoon Network. Things like, um, let's see. My kids were born 95, 97, 2000, 2004. It was somewhere along those lines. I think that was like the advent of the Powerpuff Girls. And I think you had... Um, Oh, oh, Dexter's Laboratory. That's the name of it. That's right. Jeez, I'm sorry for not getting that. I Don't worry that. about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, once in a while, it's like we have our um brain farts or uh, our blackout moments, whatever it is. It's very common for us as well, too. So you it, know, is, you, it is. And of course, you're not the only. Of course, we're not the only ones that get them, too. It's like I've seen people that get like several as well, too. But um, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> it just made me think of it. It's like he, he was a really good guy. You know, he goes, yeah, that's how we got here. I, I know that part. <laughs> like that so <laughs> nice nice oh, just one of the best and um and and of course too that uh we'll, we'll also talk about your um you got you got two wonderful children too but we got your daughter renee you got your son randy we'll talk about it in just one minute you also an author of a great book you listen to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonic web studios.com for all your needs also brought to you by our official sponsor of the mike widener show international warring author mia molson's the missing available on amazon and paperback and ebook we'll be back with the amazing wizard of uh, stars gary levitt after this time out. the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios if you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today mention the mike wagner show and get 20 percent off your project Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. 
tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the amazing uh, impersonary and Wizard of the Stars, Gary Levitt from the New England area here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, we got to hear a bunch of voices as well, too, and uh, maybe a couple more um, before I wrap up and have to extend as well, too. You got two great children. You got your son, Randy, who we call Bubba. He was the Division One college punter. And your daughter, Renee, who's an up-and-coming country singer as well, too. And, um, you know, tell us about your wonderful children, especially your son being a Division One college punter. That's right. He was at Bridgeton Academy in Maine this past year. He's now a Division I punter for Stonehill. And as we speak, he is at a punting or kicking academy in Birmingham, Alabama. He's down there with other Division I punters from across the country. There's some XFL punters, guys that are playing in the brand new Dwayne the Rock Johnson League. And mm. I believe there's some NFL kickers and punters that will be at this camp as the summer progresses. But it's pretty cool. He's down there doing his thing. And, and the best thing to say about my son is he so focused on becoming the best that he can possibly be. He measures everything that he eats. He's religiously in the weight room and working out seven days a week. He's on the fields. I retrieve his footballs in the middle of the winter. It could be zero degrees out, and we'll be out there in a driving snowstorm. He goes, Dad, can you feel my punts? And I go, yep. I got about a half hour before I freeze my butt off, but let's go. And so he's that type of kid that, where most kids are out partying on a Friday night or doing whatever they're doing on a Friday night. He's in a gym working out. He's studying the best players that ever played the game. And he's just focused. He's one of the most focused individuals I've ever met. He gets on my case when I'm not eating right. He measures. And this is so cool, Mike. He measures every single thing that he eats. And that's why he's gone from being the, the chubby little kid about two or three years ago to being built like, Chris Evans, Captain America. If you look at it, that's Captain America. Oh my gosh. Yes. And that was a heck of a movie as well, too. And all the Marvel, car the uh, comics as well, too, the movies and everything. Oh my God. That guy's like so built. Unbelievable. You know, he they, is. You know, make the main thing of punters as well, too. I think of the great punters in the NFL. You had Ray Guy and then he had, um, was it, um, was it, uh, Gary Roby from the Dolphins. You also had John Jett from the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And then you had um, the, the Craig Colquitt and his two sons, and they played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think there was, um, oh gosh, I think there was like a couple other punters, but those are the ones that really stand out in my mind. I mean, Ray Guy started making the mark, and then you had quite a few others that just go along the way. So I would, I, I would love to see him get up there along the lines like Ray Guy, John Jett, the cold quits and uh, everything else too. It's like, oh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned some great ones, Mike. And it's funny. You mentioned the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but even though we live in new England, we're Pittsburgh Steelers fans. And oh, amazing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and we talked about that recently. He says, if I'm fortunate enough to play in the NFL someday, and I truly think he will because he's doing all the right things, but he says, what happens if I play for the Patriots? Do we still root for the Steelers? I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know what? You root for the team you're on first, and then the Steelers can be your second favorite team. That's mm -hmm. how it would work. And, and who knows? Maybe you end up wearing the black and gold someday, which would be terrific. I was just thinking about with the son, too. If you were to play for the Patriots and the way Belichick keeps coaching, you know, getting him into playoffs, the Super Bowl every time, it's like, he almost like you got a couple of Super Bowl rings the way it's going to. And then he can retire with the Steelers. You know, just be casual and if he gets picked there up on the go. team. Hey, that's great. So, I, <laughs> I mean, we, I, need, we need more punters like him, to be honest with you. We really do in the NFL. Well, here's the thing with my son. And I know that whoever's watching today that understands punters in the NFL, there's been this really fascination with Australian punters, mm. which is rugby style punting where they run to the side and they punt it. It gives the opportunity for their players to get more time to get downfield or it's a misdirectional punt. But my son is American style punter, traditional style punter. However, he was asked on one of his videos to try the Australian style. So he's punting these things well into the 50s on the, the distance, well into five second time for the hang time. And then they said, okay, let's see the, let's see the Australian style. Now he had never done it before and he starts nailing these punts. Wow. And, and it's kind of funny because the Australian guys are averaging typically anywhere between 
35 and maybe 42, 43 yards per punt. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like 49, 50 yards on the Australian style punt. So he's, he's an athlete. He can throw, he can catch. And obviously the people are going to say you're biased. You're the dad. And in most cases I'd say, yeah, that would be, but I had the opportunity myself to play sports and coach sports at the collegiate level. And I've assessed talent on an honest way. Me as a runner, I said I was a pretty good runner and I could win some races when the real good guys didn't show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good guys. I had a shot at winning my son. He's a superior athlete to anything that I was when I was younger. It's not even close. We go into a weight room and he embarrasses me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, when he gets to the NFL one day and whoever he plays for, make sure we get Texas to fit the yard line. We can watch him punt. <laughs> Well, you say what your favorite team is, and no matter who he plays with or for, maybe it is that team, but whenever that team happens to be in the, your stadium, that's going to happen, Mike. That's where we'll make it happen as well, too. Of course, uh, we're close to Minnesota Vikings, but I've been a Green Bay Packer fan for God knows how long, being born in Wisconsin. And, of course, my adopted team's the Denver Broncos. It's in the western half of the state. So, <laughs> so, so we got all that. He's got a choice of any 32 teams as well, too. You got, of course, you got the XFL, got the arena ball and everything like that. So I'd like to wish your son the best of luck. He sounds like an amazing partner. You also have a terrific daughter, Renee, too, who's an up-and-coming country um, singer-songwriter as well, too. So... Looking forward yeah, to her, she's what she's it. got. Yes. She's, she's doing really well. She's been singing, believe it or not, since she was three years old. I had an old truck, which was just a one row truck where the old uh, children's seat had to be in the front because we didn't have a back row. Mm -hmm. And she'd sit in that seat with me and we'd be driving down the highway and we would be singing Beatles tunes. And wow. the funny thing is, when I'm listening to her, I had to turn the music down on the radio and I said, she can actually sing. <laughs> I can't sing. I can impersonate, but I can't sing. So anyway, she's doing a good job. And as the years progressed, she entered different competitions here up in the greater Boston area. She won a couple. She didn't win a couple, but she stayed with it. And then she started writing. She nice. started writing country tunes at the age of 13. She's collaborated with guys from Nashville. The guys from Nashville, one of them was Grammy nominated. Wow. And she kept writing and writing and her voice developed. And it's it's to the point where from 13 to about 22, the voice get better and better. But it was never to the point where you say, wow, this girl's got a good voice. It was always like I had said with my sports, it was pretty good, but it was never great. Amazing. She's, she's, she's on the cusp of it being great. Not quite there. But the thing with Renee is she can write. She can sing. She's a very pretty girl. And then the other thing she does as well as anybody I've seen. Now, I'm really partial to Bruce Springsteen when it comes to concerts. But Renee engages an audience as a woman or as a female better than any women that I've seen engage an audience. She's not just about singing. She makes everybody in the audience feel special. She's worked with special needs kids where she's done shows just for special needs. Nice. Uh, older audiences, a good demographic mix of black, white, Asian, Spanish, uh, young, old across the board. And she makes everybody a part of it. She'll pull people up on stage for certain songs. Like she does a great cover and most of her songs are original. She's got 20 originals, but on one of the covers, and I know, you know, the song well is Nancy Sinatra's uh, these boots are made for walking. Oh, my We're favorite. Yes, yes. That's my favorite. And she also collaborated with uh, Lee Hazelwood, which we still have one of the albums as well, too. That was amazing. Wow. And, and, and she'll pull people up to if they have boots, they're on stage. She basically <laughs> she she hones in on who's wearing boots. She pulls those people on stage to do these boots are made for walking. And, and the band that she plays with, it's called Renee and the Renegades. They do a little routine with these boots, and it's it's pretty cool. That is cool. That's really amazing, too. And, of course, speaking of children, you also wrote a children's book called Charlie Horse with an anti-bullying theme. And uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, Charlie Horse actually was something that I had come up with from years ago. I was with my dad just sitting around talking about different things. And one of the things that my dad did for my brothers and myself was he said a couple things. And, and he was a great man and a great writer himself. He said, make sure you always stick up for the weak because some of them can't defend themselves or 
get out there and stick up for themselves. And I always remember that. And I had seen a lot of bullying take place as I grew up. And I had seen special needs kids who they used to implement into the gym classes where I went to junior high and they got picked on and I hated it. And I'd hop in and I'd defend them when people would pick on them. Most of the fights I won, some of them I lost, but I never felt like I really lost because I was sticking up for the special needs or the kids that couldn't stick up for themselves. Hmm. So it kind of inspired Charlie Horse. Charlie Horse is a disabled horse. He injured one of his legs while saving a baby bear from a forest fire. And saving the baby bear from the forest fire, he then goes on to become his friends for life. They'll come back to see each other later on. So the subtitle of the book is Friends for Life. Charlie Horse is the name of the book. It's got seven horses. Charlie's the leader of the horses. And now we've turned it into an animation. And we are hoping that this animation will see the light of day sometime here in 2022, possibly early 2023. Oh, that's very nice. And where can we find the book at? You can get it on Amazon. Yeah, you can. If you have Barnes and Nobles, which I know those are starting to go by the wayside, but any bookstore out there, you can order it or you can go on the Amazon. You can get Charlie West. Now, keep in mind, too, Mike, if you would, we're going back and we are re-illustrating the book to look like the characters that you're seeing in the animation. The originals were done and it wasn't quite what I was looking for, but we got it done. And the, the young lady that did the job, she she got it so that the point that we could publish it. But now once the uh, animation has been done, we're going back and we're changing the look. The look has to appeal to all ages. And you know this and I know this, but a lot of your listeners or viewers don't know this. Bugs Bunny was originally drawn and it was very rough around the eight edges. Oh, I remember that. He's like this. Yeah. Oh, like, like, hey, hey, hey. like, you know, buck teeth going down like this and like a really long nose. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, not really something that would last that many years. So what they did, and folks, you can go look this up. The reason, one of the reasons why, is, aside from his wise guy persona, but the reason that Bugs is so popular is because they went back and they drew him again with feminine features. Oh, so that's he's interesting. Pretty. What's up, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So it, it, you'll remember those episodes, with whether it's with Yosemite Sam or with Elma Fudd, he actually dresses up as a girl. Or huh. even did it with, he went through the tunnel of love with the, uh, the jungle guy there. Unga bunga bunga. Oh yeah. I remember that. <laughs> was Babs pissed or something or what? <laughs> Bugs was ahead of his time. He was the first trans. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, nothing, nothing at all too. It's like, he can get away wherever he wanted as well too. And, um, also made me think of another that, uh, evolved through time was Mickey mouse. Where it's like Mickey just had a really long nose and, you know, male monster ears and then i guess he kind of got slimmed down to where he's at i guess i I don't, I don't know who who really led was it disney or was it warner brothers like i mean who who took the lead in what or who followed or something yes it's kind of well i think uh they, they those were both established at about the same time but when bug switched it up and they saw the success and the appeal then they did it with mickey mouse so you know mickey mouse was like Oh boys, you know. <laughs> Hello, oh, Goofy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Goofy. And what's your name, Mick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I challenge everybody to do better than what I did. So. <laughs> that, Mike, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I don't get a chance to work with other impressionists. You're really good at what you do. Oh, you know something too. Um. You know something? I like to be on your show as well, too. Or if you had a podcast, I like to work with you as well, too. And of course, um, you know, we'll talk about you being your show. And uh, speaking of impersonators, you also performed as uh, Bruce Springsteen and um, John Lennon as well, too. Maybe just uh, give us a bit, bit of a glimpse about that. I mean, I mean, we got to wrap it up somehow. It's like those are yeah. my two favorites. Yes. Yeah, so we, we, we can definitely do that. Now, Springsteen in 1984, 85, born in the USA, comes out. I was at Salem State College my final year. And as you can see, my hair is a little curly, a little wavy. That's from a perm. And back when I got the perms, when I started at the age of 18, people would say, you look like the boss. You look like the boss. And I never really thought about it too much. But then there was an impersonating company here in Boston. A friend of mine, Jimmy J, he had a Cindy Lauper. He had a Madonna and a Michael Jackson. And people said, you got to go to this guy and see if you can impress. I said, well, I don't really sing. I said, well, they're just lip syncing. So I said, hmm. okay, I did. And I lip sync for a few years at Springsteen, but then I was able to get down his voice. So sometimes the shows will lip sync. Sometimes they were live. Sometimes it was with tracks and sometimes it was with a live band. 
So it was mixed up. But the, the best part of it is I got some national appearances nice. doing Springsteen. Yeah, I was on like ABC TV doing Springsteen. I was on Fox TV doing Springsteen. I was in Montego, uh, Montego Bay, Jamaica with a Michael Jackson impersonator. Yeah, and the guy that prom- <laughs> Well, he promoted it as if we were the real things and people down there on the island, they bought us. <laughs> yeah, my boy, no, no, you I say. <laughs> and, and and you know what, Mike? The funniest part of it all. Well, not funny, but it, it's typical. Is that I did the songs. They were more into Michael Jackson. Now I'm okay with that. But one song that Springsteen did was called "Trapped." It was written by Jamaican Jimmy Cliff. Oh my god! I, I did love that, that song. It's a great song. And when I did that the people went nuts. It was like wow. all that applause that Michael Jackson got throughout his, his show, that one song, it was like gangbusters. It came on because it was like <laughs> native Jamaican, Jimmy Cliff. And it was a song that they all knew. Wow. That was amazing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. It just takes me back to day. We're here with uh, Gary Levitt, the wizard of stars. Um, we have a thousand voices in the new England area on the Mike Wagner show. Gary, a big thank you for your time. You're absolutely amazing. A couple of things. Uh, what can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond? Well, hopefully our Charlie horse TV show is going to be on the air. That's number one. We also have something else out there called City Work, because it's based on Boston City Work, because it's pretty funny. <laughs> and we've got some people uh, like the Soup Nazi from Seinfeld, who is signed on to be a part of this. Nice. We also have Johnny Brennan, one of the jerky boys that wants to be a part of it. And then back to Charlie Horse for just a sec, a basketball player by the name of Otto Skillmore, the eight train. I remember Artis Gilmore. I was yes. uh, I, I went to Bulls games and he was the big guy, seven foot Artis Gilmore. He was like he, he he was like the poor man's Kareem Abdul Jabbar doing the sky hooks, the blocks, and everything else. I mean, the Bulls were crappy that year, but he was very entertaining. I actually got his autograph. Really nice guy. Artis Gilmore, he's going to need to play the part of the A train for Charlie Horse. We're going to have a talking train, not Thomas the talking train, but the A train in this case. Nice. And, and, and of course, you know, a couple of guys wanted to say hi to you before we leave, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So how you doing? It's Al Pacino here. I don't know whether you know this, but Mike, he's a good guy. I want to give him a hoo Well, I'll tell you what here, man. It's Jack Nicholson. Mike Wagner is a marvel of modern science. Any women out there, take him on. He's going to light you up like a pinball machine. And you're going to pay off in silver dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. I'll see you at the Lakers game. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. All right. Put man. it in the basket, Chief. Just put it in the basket. Put it back, baby. <laughs> Dick <by Cal. laughs> and who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Biggest influence in my career uh, is a couple people. My dad for never giving up. Oh, my dream. And as far as the different people that had multiple talents, Dean Martin is right up there. Big time, Dean Martin. I think he's the greatest entertainer of all time. He could sing. He could dance. He could act both comedic and drama. And he was a good looking dude. So I got him as number one. So he's probably my number one influence. Mm. And, and of course, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll act drunk and all he did ha- does have a thing of water too. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and rest assured, Mike, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I've never even tried marijuana. A lot of people think I'm crazy just the way I am. That's, and that's a good thing too. It's natural, literally. Yes. And what's exactly. the best, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I would say this, whether you're a young kid or whether you're someone that's close to my age, Don't give up on that dream. I haven't given up on mine. Every single day, I'm going at it. And the best line that I've ever heard was by Sylvester Stallone in the movie Rocky when he said, it ain't how hard you hit. It's how hard you get hit and keep on moving forward. And that's true in all facets of life. 
That is very wonderful. Yo, Adrian! <laughs> <laughs> and let's go down some uh, eggs as well, too. We're here with Gary Levitt, the uh, Wizard of um, Stars on the Mike Wagner Show. Terrific impressions from the Wingle in the area. Gary, thank thank for your time. You've been totally fantastic. I really enjoyed having a ball with you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Or can people uh, check out Charlie Horse, check out your uh, TV show, your radio show, and uh, everything you do? Yep, sure. Great. Up here in Boston, I'm on 95.9 WATD. By the way, Mike's going to be a guest of mine in a couple of weeks. Uh, we got Jerry Mathers, the Beaver, coming on next week, along with Irish Mickey Ward, the boxer. But I think the following week, we're going to have Mike Wagner on with us. And so you can go to 959WATD.com. And you can check us out there if you're in different parts of the country or different parts of the world. In addition to that, charliehorse.org. That's the animation Charlie is C-H-A-R-L-I-E horse.org. City workers, we don't have that website up and running yet, but that's okay because Charlie Horse will more than entertain you. And last but not least, you can find ReneeLevitt.com. You can follow her as far as her music endeavors and my son on Twitter. Instagram, that's Randy Levitt Kicker. And we will certainly check that out. Once again, very Gary, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish you all best. You got a great future ahead of you. And the words of Bob Eubanks from the uh, dating game. Mwah, bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're very good at what you do, Michael. Very good. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosinzia of Missing and powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms and, of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening.